is ADHD medication addictive and can it increase the risks of addiction and substance abuse? Part of the answer may totally surprise you. There is no question that stimulant drugs can be addictive. And many people are understandably concerned when seeking ADHD diagnosis and treatment. These concerns are real and valid, but they're formed from misrepresented research, anecdotal evidence, and an unhealthy dose of media sensationalism, which erroneously supports the notion that ADHD medication treatment leads to substance abuse and addiction. And then there are all of the ill-informed opinions and comments we are subjected to almost daily that help perpetuate these myths and half-truths, like these. Hey, look at that. He's on an analog meth, basically. But his skin and teeth aren't rotting away. Stimulants are really similar to meth. Psych meds are just flat out unnecessary chemical pacifiers. You took kitty meth and cried. Wow, revolutionary. Fake disorder, cash cow for many. The key message I want you to take away, even if you don't watch any more of this video, is this. Fear and suspicion is often created from a lack of knowledge and understanding. It's okay to not understand something, and it's okay to not understand the data presented in research, but this does not in any way mean it should be dismissed or looked upon suspiciously. So before perpetuating myths and untruths into the world, we have a duty to do the research, to check the sources of information, and when needed, consult with qualified and experienced people. So let's untangle this topic a little bit. Non-medical use of stimulant medication, especially amongst young adult students, is a worrying trend. But this problem is not related to people with ADHD who are taking ADHD medication as prescribed. Nonetheless, it has contributed to the notion that properly prescribed ADHD medication can cause addiction. And sadly, people with ADHD are at a much higher risk of substance abuse. And these risks are even higher when ADHD is left undiagnosed and unchecked. We have lower levels of the chemical dopamine in our brains. So we can turn to these substances as a way to try and make up for this deficit. ADHD can have a debilitating effect on our academic performance, our work performance, and on our social performance. So we may turn to drugs and alcohol, food, and other sources of dopamine to find relief from these sometimes overwhelming negative effects we experience in our lives. ADHD is also highly genetic, and the risks of substance abuse increase even further for ADHDers who live in households where there are other family members with ADHD who aren't managed or diagnosed and are using substances as a way to deal with their symptoms. These are some of the main links between ADHD and substance abuse and addiction. Now, in the 60s and 70s, researchers showed that stimulant medication caused addiction. This caused huge concern until the researchers realized they'd made a really crucial error. Using rats and mice, they had injected disproportionately large amounts of these drugs, rather than giving them orally and proportionately, as is used in the treatment of ADHD. Researchers redid this study and corrected these errors. And of course, they found no evidence for addiction when the medication was used properly. These peer review results are validated and accepted, but the damage of the initial trial and that error is already done and had already entered mainstream social consciousness. So can stimulant medication, when used to treat ADHD, cause addiction? Here's the answer, and part of it may really surprise you. But first, don't forget to hit me up with some of that sweet, sweet dopamine by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps keep me going and pushes me through those more executive function heavy tasks when making these videos. Not only does stimulant medication not lead to future addictive disorders, it has also been proven many times over that stimulant medication treatment for ADHD 
actually helps protect against it. A recent Harvard study found that people with ADHD who received appropriate treatment in childhood were 50% less likely than their untreated peers to develop alcohol and substance abuse issues later on. Another study followed a group of ADHDers for several years, one group taking ADHD medication and one group that didn't. Again, the results showed that the group taking ADHD medication had far less substance abuse issues than those that didn't. Similarly, studies on adults with ADHD who were treated with stimulants as use had far lower rates of substance abuse than those who weren't treated with medication. Stimulant treatment for ADHD also improves our academic and social functioning. These improvements translate into enhanced self-esteem, less self-medication, and hence, less substance abuse. The studies are numerous and the data is clear and unequivocal. When used therapeutically, stimulant medications used to treat ADHD do not cause addictions. Instead, because these medications help to control the symptoms of ADHD, they reduce the likelihood of developing a substance use disorder. There are risks and side effects involved with taking any medication, but the facts are very clear. When used properly under medical supervision, stimulant medications are some of the safest that we have. Now, let me be very clear here. I am not recommending that everybody with ADHD should be taking medication. That is a personal choice, but that choice should be arrived at with as many facts as possible at your disposal, not anecdotal accounts or ill-informed opinions and media hype. We have to approach our treatment with a balance and pragmatism that the world at large seems to be totally against. Please just remember, if you are beginning treatment for ADHD with medication, it might not be the correct type or the correct dosage straight away. It is not some great one-shot panacea that will remove all of the negative effects of ADHD from our lives. It takes time to determine the right medication and gradually build up to the correct dosage. If your medication isn't benefiting you or has stopped working correctly, speak to your medical practitioner as soon as possible. Non-stimulant medication and other second-line treatments can also be effective, but more of those in another video. But for now, take care. Bye-bye.